Today we are going to learn how to simplify radical expressions. And so it says the directions say to simplify, but they also give this extra explanation of, of what to do here. They say that all variables represent non-negative numbers. And the reason they say that is because we can't have a negative number underneath the radical sign. So if we had x underneath the radical sign, what they're saying is this value of x, or a, or b, or whatever the variable is, cannot be negative. So it has to represent non-negative numbers. Because in our class, so far, we've learned that we cannot have a negative number underneath the radical sign. So if x was negative 1, you can't have that. And so later on, we'll learn that we can come up with a number or a representation for a negative number underneath the radical sign. But for right now, we'll say we just can't do that. So what we're going to end up doing is taking out the perfect squares in these numbers that are factors of these numbers. So what you want to do is you want to think of factors that are perfect squares. So think of these factors, the square root of 4, the square root of 9, the square root of 16, the square root of 25, and so on. So what you're doing is you're mainly thinking of these, but you could also think of 49 or 64, any of those. But these are the main ones you're looking for when the numbers aren't too large. So as I look at this 108, when I think about this, I see that 9 goes into this number because one of the divisibility rules for 9 is that if this number sum, see 1, 0, and 8, those numbers sum, to equal 9, and 9 goes into 9, so I know I can divide by 9. 9 times 12 makes 108, so one of the rules with radicals is you can take this, the factors and separate them underneath different radical signs. Well, we can continue factoring the 12 because I see 4 goes into 12. So again, as you do this, you're always looking for factors that are perfect squares. So that's what I did here. I took out the perfect squares that were factors. Now I'm going to go ahead and take those square roots that I can. So like the square root of 9 is 3, the square root of 4 is 2, and can't take the square root of 3 without approximating it, so we just leave it underneath the radical sign. So from there all we do is just multiply the two numbers, 3 and 2, to get 6, and 6 square roots of 3 is the simplified form. So the reason why we do this is so that we can have smaller numbers underneath the radical sign, and it also allows us to approximate things quickly in our head. For instance, I know that the square root of 3 is about 1.7. 1.73 is even closer, but if I just use 1.7, then I know that 1.7 times 6 gives me a number just a little smaller than 12. So that's why it's nice to be able to simplify these radicals so it's easier to come up with a representation of what those numbers are. The square root of 3,000, well, one of the numbers I didn't write up here that I should also look for is 100. So if you see it, 100 goes into these numbers, take out that number, take out that perfect square. And so the square root of 100 times square root of 30 makes the square root of 3,000. Well, 30 doesn't have any factors that are perfect squares. 5, 6, 3, 2, those numbers... Don't, are not perfect squares, so we can't take out a perfect square in there, so, but we can take that square root of 100, which is 10. And so I have 10 square roots of 30 as my answer. Next one, when we have variables, if we have the square root of any even number, all you have to do is go ahead and figure out what half those numbers are, because that's what, rep that's what the exponents represent, is repeated multiplication. So for instance, the square root of x to the 10th is just x to the 5th. Oops, no square root symbol around anymore when I take the square root, so we'll get rid of that. So again, just x to the 5th times x to the 5th makes x to the 10th. So it has to just, just divide the number by 2. So that's what we can do with these. But we've got to take the per perfect square root of 150, and when numbers end in double zeros, 25, 50, or 75, you could take out a 25. 25 times 6 makes 50, or 150, that is. And I also have the square root of a to the 4th, which I'll take, and the square root of b to the 6th. And so again, when they're even exponents, just take half their numbers. We'll talk about odd ones later on in the course. But for right now, we'll just deal with the even ones. The square root of 25 is 5. And the square root of a to the 4th is just a squared. The square root of b to the 6th is b to the 3rd. And then we have the square root of 6. So there is our answer. Well, the next one, again, we've got some even exponents, so we'll be able to take the square roots of those numbers. Again, I'll take out a 10 this time, because it ends in 1, 0, and I see that 64 is the number I've left over, and that's a perfect square. 
So I'm going to take these square roots separately here. And so from this point, what I'm going to do is take that square root of 64, which is 8. The square root of x squared is x. The square root of y to the 8th is y to the 4th. And so I just have that 10 underneath the radical sign. So that is the simplified form. Well, when we've got a fraction underneath the radical sign, what we learned earlier in the course is that we can take this and write this two separate fractions. And then just take the square root of the number we can. So we have here the square root of 10 over 3. That would be our answer. Over here, we've got a perfect square in 27 that we can take out. So I'm going to take that 27 and factor it. 9 times by 3 makes 27. So I'm going to treat those as two separate radicals. Down below, I've got the square root of 4. So you just take those square roots that you can. So you have 3 square roots of 3 all over 2. Next one, again, same sort of thing, but here we've got some odd exponents. But no fear we can make them even because we can take out those common factors of x. So we can take out the 7x's from the bottom, 7 from the top. So what we're left with is that square root of 81, the square root of x to the second now because 9 minus 7 makes 2. Down below, we have the square root of 4. So here we have 9x all over 2. That would be our answer. Well, the next one here, we've got some x's we can take out, so we'll go ahead and do that. And again, you could reduce the fraction if you could, but you can't in this case. So just look for common factors. One of the divisibility rules that I'm going to use is for 4. If you look at the last two digits, does 4 go into 32? Yes, it does. That means 4 goes into 132. So let's go, set, go ahead and see how many times. So I've got square root of 4. Divide 4 into 132. Let's see how many times it goes in there. I know it goes into 13. We have 3 times, and that is with 1 left over. And so when we go ahead and bring down the 2, we got 4 into 12. It goes 3 times, so that makes 33. So 4 times 33 makes 132. We've got the square root of x to the second. Down below, we've got the square root of 49. So we go ahead and just take the square roots that we can. So we've got 2x times the square root of 33 all over 7. That is our answer. Next thing you're going to see is a problem on Huron's formula, or Hero's formula. And basically, it's another way to come up with the area of a circle. Now, it seems a little more complicated than the area formula you're used to seeing. Area equals 1 half the base times the height. Well, this formula that we've used so often, 1 half base times height, only works when we have right angles. We've got to have a right angle. We've got to have, we know what the height of the triangle is, which is a perpendicular from the opposite uh, vertex to a base. And so if we don't have that, this is another way we can come up with that answer. However, you can only use this if you have all three sides. So I'm going to give you an example of one that is a right triangle. And if I was to find this area, a 6, 8, 10 happens to be a right triangle. So if I was to draw this out, if this is 6, this would be 8. This would be my hypot or my right angle there, and this is going to end up being 10. It works up because if you square 6, you get 36. So 6 squared plus 8 squared equals 10 squared. So this makes 36 and 64, and you can see how those numbers add to make 100. So I know this is a perfect, this is a right triangle, and if I was to find the area, it's really fast. I mean, it just goes one half the base, which is 8 times by 6, and so if I take half of 8, I get 4. 4 times 6 makes 24. Well, that was pretty fast, but I'm going to prove to you now that this other formula works as well. And Again, it, it's a good formula, but it's only good if you have all the sides and it's not a right triangle. Then this is the formula I would use. And I've used this before when I've done some patio work before. If I wanted to find the area of a, of a, a, a triangle then, and I didn't have a right angle, I couldn't make a 90 degree angle, I can just measure the different sides and then just use this formula. So let's go ahead and take a look at what it is. S represents the semi-perimeter. So you're going to add up all the sides. So let's go ahead and do that. So s equals 6 plus 8 plus 10. Well, we add up all the sides, but then we divide them by 2. We divide that sum by 2. So that's what this 1 half represents. So I do that work. 6 and 8 make 14 plus 10 makes 24 divided by 2 makes 12. So 12 is my semi-perimeter. So what you do is you use that semi-perimeter and you multiply that number by the difference of that number and its different sides. So like 12 minus 6, and then I do 12 minus 8, 
and then one more out here, I do 12 minus 10. And so I go ahead and multiply these numbers, so let's go ahead and do the subtraction first. 12 times by 6 times by 4 times by 2. And so we go ahead and multiply out all those numbers, and you end up with 576. Well, that just happens to be a perfect square, and it's 24. So you get the same exact answer, 24 inches square. Now, it seems a lot tougher, but on a problem where you didn't have a right angle, this is the formula you would end up using. So those are problems that you'll see on tonight's homework. Good luck.